tonight. Polymets permits after a key permit is called into question. The matter is getting a public hearing in St. Paul. And the impeachment trial of the president is officially underway as bipartisan bickering breaks out over the rules process. And St. Louis County plow drivers are back on the job after six days of striking. Now both parties are looking towards the future. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Anthony Mack. Kristen is on assignment. We'll hear from her in just a moment. It's day one of many as environmental groups challenge the MPCA in court over a permit the agency issued to Polymet. CBS 3's Kristen Vaki has been in the courtroom in St. Paul all day today as testimony gets underway. Kristen, what can you tell us? Hey, Tony, good evening. Yeah, while today's hearing was about a polymet permit, the project wasn't the focus of arguments or testimony. In fact, it was the MPCA's issuance of those permits that was being called into question. A courtroom full of lawyers representing a number of environmental groups, the MPCA, Polymet, and the Environmental Protection Agency began their arguments this morning. This is a fact-finding hearing into allegations that the MPCA tried to hide concerns by the EPA about the project's risks. The judge made it clear arguments had to be focused around procedural irregularities and nothing more. While all sides had representation, the prime focus was between the MPCA and environmental groups. Lawyers representing environmental groups focused on previous pattern and practice of the MPCA in the handling of certain permits in hopes of providing there was motive in the allegations that the agency tried to hide comments from concerned EPA employees. Meanwhile, the MPCA's team argued they did not get rid of or try to hide documents that they were legally obligated to keep. This case is about efforts that PCA undertook to withhold documents from that administrative record. They knew that would be part of any legal challenge coming down the road. And essentially what it requires is comments, responses to comments, and then documents, written documents, on which the agency relied. That is what's required for the administrative record, and that's something that PCA did, in fact, preserve. The first witness of the hearing was Kevin Perard, a former employee of the EPA who worked directly with regulatory agencies, including the MPCA. He testified for about five hours, explaining his recollection of conversations surrounding the MPCA and its protocol in the issuing of permits. Mr. Perard will continue his testimony tomorrow morning. The hearing is set to get back underway at 9 a.m., and it's expected to last five to ten days. All right, still a lot to come on this one. CBS 3's Kristen Bakke live for us in St. Paul. Thanks, Kristen. Well, after six days on strike, St. Louis County Union plow drivers went back to work this morning. County reps say it's a good day for them and the Teamsters. County Communications Manager Dana Kazel called the strike a challenge and says they're thankful they could reach an agreement with the union. It gives members extra personal leave time and flexibility in choosing their insurance plans but does not change the sick leave accrual cap. Kazel says the deal benefits everyone. Both parties worked really hard to get to this point, and, and it was really a refreshing thing this morning to be able to welcome our employees back to work. It's where we wanted them all along, and I know it's where they wanted to be. Kazel says the supervisors who stepped in to plow during the strike did a great job, but they're happy to be back to full staff. She says their focus now is moving forward as a team. Chum's Warming Centers will be open tomorrow night. It's part of the annual count of homeless people in the U.S. The count gives a snapshot for homelessness comparison over time. The state uses the data to examine trends and gain more knowledge on how to better use resources. Volunteers, schools, uh, schools street outreach workers, and several other organizations assist with the count each year. You can head to our website for more information. All right, Dave. Pretty yeah. mild day out there today. Well, it started off a little bit nippy, but then started to perk up yeah. as a warm front from the west starts to come our way. So the sunshine of earlier in the day, of course, is giving way now to a cloudy sky. And we eye up the situation. We see that the Arctic high pressure that chilled us down for two days is now diving down towards Florida, where it's expected to drop temperatures into the upper 30s, lower 40s there. And they've been issuing falling iguana warnings because they're cold-blooded. They fall out of the trees when it gets that chilly. Well, we're going to be warming up as that low-pressure system 
system and its warm front from the west approaches our area. And that means a bit of a mix is possible. I think we could get a slight spotty mix going on around here tonight. More dry than not, though. And tomorrow should be more dry than not. Daytime starts 16, midday 25 degrees, and by the end of the day, up around 33, which will help egg on at least a 30% chance for a rain and snow mix to really pick up around the region and continue perhaps for the next couple of days. We'll talk about how long this warm spell will last and how many days a slippery mix could come down in, of course, just a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. The man charged with groping four nurses has been found incompetent to stand trial. Edward Smeja is charged with four counts of fourth-degree criminal sexual conduct. According to a criminal complaint, he touched four nurses inappropriately back in December. At least one incident happened at a Twin Ports medical facility. Law enforcement has surveillance video of each incident. Now, based on court records, it is unclear what happens next in this case. Wisconsin Insurance Company... Uh, Health care providers and others have announced an agreement to do away with prior authorization requirements for the majority of patients. Those agreements can slow the prescription process, allowing treatment of substance abuse. The agreement is considered a major advancement in the fight against addiction. Wisconsin Representative John Nygren says the deal will expand the access to medication-assisted treatment to more than one million patients. Insurance companies also agreed to cover at least one product to treat opioid addiction without pre-approval from the provider. New data from the Wisconsin DNR shows hunters harvested roughly 14 percent less deer in 2019 compared to 2018. A recent DNR report shows that hunters took just over 288,000 deer across all seasons last year. Now that includes archery, the traditional nine-day season, and the youth hunt. In total, that's down more than 300, down from more than 335,000 deer in 2018. Officials report that reduction is due to the season's late start and poor weather. The DNR also shows that about 10,000 fewer deer licenses were sold last year than in 2018. The first phase of President Trump's impeachment trial began today in the Senate, with both sides arguing over the rules of the process. Senate Republicans announced changes to their rules resolution after pushback from some party moderates. The resolution will now allow each side up to three days to present 24 hours of opening arguments. The House impeachment record will also now automatically be admitted into the evidence. The president's team said in a legal brief that both articles, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, are not impeachable, and they accuse Democrats of, quote, dangerous pervasion of the Constitution. Opening arguments are expected to begin tomorrow afternoon. A hot topic took center stage on the Iron Range today. Hundreds gathered in Hibbing as several state lawmakers on the Senate Judiciary Committee held a public hearing on proposed gun laws. The forum was created as a way to get more input from those in rural Minnesota. The presentation was about six gun laws that are being proposed ahead of this year's legislative session. Several are carryovers from prior years. Some tighten restrictions on gun owners, others relax laws. Democrats say tighter gun laws will save lives. These uh, are designed uh, to work off of existing laws in Minnesota, to use existing due processes uh, that are in Minnesota, um, and quite literally to save lives. Members of the NRA were also at the forum. They are in opposition to some of the proposed laws. Uh, we oppose gun control. We oppose this type of gun control. The background checks don't stop criminals from getting firearms. Duluth Police Chief Mike Tuscan and St. Louis County Attorney Mark Rubin also attended and voiced their support for some of the measures. By the way, the legislative session starts on February 11th. A big achievement for three students from WITC. They recently came in third place while taking part in a Wisconsin health care competition. Ashley Rolf, Kira Gustafson, and Lynette Wester all took part in the competition. The students were assigned a case study of a complicated health care situation. They worked together for two months to come up with an analysis of opportunities within the scenario. There were eight other finalist teams up against the WITC students. They received $1,000 for placing in third. The competition took place in the Wisconsin Dells earlier this month. Still to come on Live Local CBS3, a popular video game is teaming up with the Red Cross, creating an unlikely duo tackling a big problem. Well, let's take a look at today's almanac. Top camp, 20 degrees, beat the normal by one. That's a sign of warm fronts coming our way. It will really send us up towards the freezing mark tomorrow, which may induce a bit of slipperiness out of the sky in the form of a rain-snow mix. We'll talk about the odds and for how long coming up after the break.
Live, local, CBS3 News at 6 with Kristen Vockey, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS3. Uh, on the other side. I saw that. Bart picks me up when I call. It gets me to my appointments. It gets me to class. It gets me to practice. It gets me to go shopping. It gets me from school. It gave me my mobility back. And it gets me here with my friends. The bus is always warm. At Bay Area Rural Transit, we have over 82,000 reasons to ride. One for every person who lives here. I guarantee you if your home just burned to the ground or you had a major accident, your first thing you're going to think about, it's not going to be, I just saved $500 on my auto and home insurance today. It's going to be, am I covered? At Vernon Insurance Agency, our first, second, and third goal is that you understand your coverage, there's no gaps in coverage, and your claims are covered when you have them. Call Vernon Insurance Agency today, 218-384-3970. Dear Winter, it's been fun getting to know you. Sleet, blizzards, ice. I love that you don't hold back. We didn't take it personally when you tried to bury us under six feet of snow. It's cool. You do your thing, and we'll do ours. Stay chill, Toyota Trucks. Get $750 customer cash on our new 2020 Tacoma or get $2,000 customer cash on our new 2020 Tundra. Find yours at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Vaping has been declared a national epidemic among youth. One in three high schoolers vape in northeastern Minnesota. My child started having seizures from vaping. There's still so many unknown chemicals. One vape cartridge has as much nicotine as at least two packs of cigarettes. My child was hospitalized with severe lung injuries. They said it was no big deal. My child said it was no risk. That it was under control. That's what my child said. But what could I have said? Get the facts and talk to your child today. in Quantico. The accident involved a top secret weapon. Rules on accident. Any evidence that could have given me a clue was lost in the blast. A new NCIS fan. Jake! 25 minutes ago, Dan's son Jake was taken. Jake was the son of an FBI agent. Bottom line is, this is one of our own people. Let's find Jake Osborne. A new FBI after a new NCIS tonight on CBS. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by St. Luke's. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Thanks to Arctic high pressure, we had sunshine the past couple of days and opportunities to get out in the woods and take some pictures of these fair weather forests. This one comes courtesy of Marie Zukoff, who's with the Wisconsin Sea Grant just across the bridge. Uh, she writes up a lot of nature stories, and nature sure uh, served her well here today, but clouds are increasing as a warm front comes to call, so the chill brought by the Arctic high is going away, and a warm front will, of course, go figure, warm things up, cloud things up, and bring us a chance for a rain-snow mix that may last about three days. We'll talk about it after we take a look at the current conditions at our airport here in Duluth. It's 18 degrees above zero, relative humidity 62 percent, and a southwesterly wind is gusting towards 20. Air pressure, well, that's falling as the high goes away and a low comes a calling. We're at 3.01 inches of mercury. Moving to the current temperatures, well, they're in a range that's pretty close to normal. If the normal is 19, we have 18 in Waters Meet and normal in Ironwood and normal in Ashland and a little warmer than normal in Superior at 21. 18 is the current temp in Moose Lake and it's that as well in Hibbing. 23 right now, International Falls, showing that the warm front working in from the west is starting to nudge temperatures up. It'll nudge them into the 30s for most towns tomorrow and then for the next week at least, it looks like we will be pretty close to the 30 degree mark for just about every town here in our region. So 
This morning we started a little bit brisk with some places below zero by a couple of degrees, but still plenty of sunshine like Marie's picture showed us. Now with that warm front and trough of low pressure coming in from the west, we see the clouds moving in from the west and a little bit of light flurry activity up around Kuchichang County. So tonight, precip-wise, as these clouds increase, we could get a little bit of precip. I don't think very much. I think the chance is only about 30% at best, and it's best in Wisconsin. Just keep in mind, as this small low-pressure system on its warm front works through the area tonight, again, clouds increase, and the chance for a little rain-snow mix increases as well, but it really only goes up to about 30%. But this low will persist for a while, so we do get several days' worth of chances coming out of it. That mix chance tomorrow is about 30%, like I mentioned, and especially tomorrow evening which leads us into Thursday then when it becomes a 60% chance and dials down to a 40% chance on Friday before we dry up on Saturday. We may not clear up though because we'll be caught between low pressure systems. Not enough oomph to bring us precip, but also not enough punch from high pressure to clear us up. Bit of another world here coming up for the weekend. For tonight, here's what's coming up. Minnesota low temps, they will run from 15 to about 21 degrees above zero increasing clouds. Wisconsin, Michigan, you get a better chance for any mix tonight than any other zone with your lows from 17 to 20. For tomorrow, daytime highs for the UP and northern Wisconsin run about 32 to 34 degrees. And if you avoid the mix in the morning, it should come later in the afternoon. And Minnesota may see that process in their neck of the woods as well. High temps there, 29 inland, 36 by the lake. And now the extended forecast, Anthony. There we go with our high temps pretty close to the freezing mark from Wednesday through next Tuesday. Once we shake off this chance for the rain-snow mix on Friday afternoon, we get a break from Saturday through Monday. But another chance for light snow could be with us by next Tuesday. Hey, but look at all those 30s in there. My goodness, that doesn't seem like January weather. <laughs> yeah, that should help us save on the heating bill, but yeah. ice anglers probably won't be too happy with it. Probably not very happy indeed. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. An unlikely partnership is bringing a new twist to a popular video game. The American Red Cross is partnering with the makers of Fortnite, hoping to engage kids and teens about humanitarian and international relations. CBS 3's Caitlin Moffat spoke with local Red Cross leaders and volunteers about how they're capitalizing on this partnership here at home. The American Red Cross is taking a new approach and expanding who and how they serve. It's all through a partnership with Fortnite really uh, no better platform over the last three years or so that engages young people than Fortnite. The original version of Fortnite is a multiplayer open world game where players take each other's lives. This partnership will bring in a new game mode for kids and teens to save each other's lives. Called Life Run, the new version allows players to treat civilians, restore infrastructure, and assist other users as quickly as possible. Red Cross internationally and the American Red Cross partnering with Fortnite is just a natural connection of uh, giving young people the reason to want to engage with our work with international humanitarian law. University of Wisconsin-Superior is also using this partnership to engage students in their new international humanitarian law program. Professor Haji started that program last year, and he's also a Red Cross volunteer and hopes that the new game can get younger people interested in the law. The greatest assets we have are the kids themselves. Hopefully this will be uh, a way for them to become interested in the subject and to become engaged. So the, this is a part of a broader uh, Red Cross strategy of involving younger people uh, to discuss why rules of war exist. Connecting gamers to an important message while opening their eyes to a future career path. Fortnite really gives an opportunity uh, where uh, young people are collaborating with each other in gameplay um, and it's about resource collection. Now Fortnite is a free downloadable game on Xbox, PlayStation and PC. The new Life Run game is a mode within Fortnite that players can access. Kelly's here to tell us what's coming up in sports. Kelly, what's coming up? Not Fortnite. Not Fortnite? You a big not... Fortnite person? I know. No. I downloaded it once and I logged in and it overwhelmed me and I said this is not designed for me. Yeah. So I deleted it. But Props to the people that are, yep, you know, seems like a good cause. playing it. Yeah. Some big area matchups tonight to look forward to. From the hockey arena to the basketball court, we have previews coming up next. Get very lucky Thursdays at the Bear. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Toyota. Presidential award winning service. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. KohlerToyota.com.
At Miller Hill Subaru, we believe in the mission of saving homeless pets and placing as many as possible in loving homes. Nearly 800 pets have been given a second chance through the Subaru Love a Pet adoption event in the past 12 years. We sponsor rescue groups near and far who share in this mission. And it's clear our amazing community supports adoption, welcoming these deserving pets to their forever homes. This is what collaboration and commitment to our community means to us. Join us for an extraordinary wintertime adventure in Bayfield. Pick your favorite sled dog team and cheer them on from start to finish as they race the challenging course of hills and flats through the forests of Bayfield. Keep warm beside the bonfire as you wait for your team to return. It's an unforgettable experience for young and old, spectator and racer alike. Food trucks, bonfires, and winter fun at the Apostle Island Sled Dog Race in beautiful Bayfield, Wisconsin, February 1st and 2nd. Get to Prime Appliance and Superior for the big New Year's clearance sale going on now. We've marked everything down again. Save 800 bucks on these one-of-a-kind LG washer-dryer combinations. That's right, wash and dry in one drum, just $9.95. Or get budget-friendly Amana washers and electric dryers, just $3.69 each. Financing always available. Get it delivered and installed or take it home today. Prime Appliance, it's the best place to buy your appliances and we'll prove it to you again this year. America isn't just sick of Donald Trump. America's getting sicker. There are one million more uninsured Americans every year under Trump, and he's repeatedly tried to repeal Obamacare. Mike Bloomberg will make sure everyone without health coverage can get it and everyone who likes theirs keep it, while capping fees to lower costs. As mayor, he helped expand coverage to 700,000 more people and champion women's reproductive health. As president, he'll give access to everyone. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. The famous Meat Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut. Over a pound of meat and cheese for just 10 bucks. It's more pepperoni for your penny, more beef for your buck, more... You get the idea. Get yours delivered now at PizzaHut.com. No one out pizzas the hut. America's most watched network. Tonight, starting at 7, only on CBS3 Duluth. Then, stay tuned for CBS3 News at 10. Holden Insurance is an independent agency partnered with Auto Owners Insurance. Each member of our team provides the best service and the peace of mind that comes with our experience and community ties. We handle all types of insurance, commercial, personal, employee benefits, and life and health. We know our clients and with them envision a future that keeps them and their families safe and protected. With Auto Owners Insurance, this is done through product knowledge, competitive pricing, and excellent service. Holden Insurance, professional agency with personal service. CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. 17. That is the number of games that the Cloquet Esco Carlton girls hockey team have won in a row. Folks, most teams in the state of Minnesota don't even have 17 wins at all, period. Certainly none in girls class 1A, which is what CEC is in. The Jacks have 18 wins this season, and they haven't lost a game since November. A big part of that is because of senior Taylor Nelson, whose 30 goals on the season is the seventh best in the state. The Bemidji State commit has an additional 20 assists on the season for 50 points as a whole, to which she can certainly attribute to a line that has been working wonders. The line I work with, we work really well together. We drive to the net and make stuff happen. I think we communicate really well too, and we talk about things that we need to work on when we come back to the bench, and I think that's what makes us um, putting pucks in the net. The Lumberjacks also have Kiana Bender, whose 25 goals is the 13th highest in the state. Put those two together, you have a force that totals out to be the third best team in Class 1A. A lot of high school teams don't have players that have been playing together for so long, and it's a gift that me and Taylor have been playing for five years, plus um, playing in sports and with boys. We've just connected really well throughout the years, and I think it's paid off. They're best friends on and off the ice, um, but the thing I love most about the two of them is, you know, on the ice, it's all business. Uh, they're each other's biggest competitor. Um, they show up, and they're ready to compete. 
And we cannot forget CEC is not the only force to be reckoned with when it comes to girls hockey in the Northland. Number six Proctor Hermantown is not doing bad at all. They're 13 and eight on the season. And those two will meet tonight at St. Luke's Sports and Events Center in just about a half hour. Puck drop is at 7 p.m. We'll have highlights tonight. And there are a few big games happening around the Northland tonight, specifically in girls sports, but maybe none bigger than this one in girls basketball, which is up at Proctor. The Rails are hosting Duluth Marshall, a pair of one-loss teams that we could be seeing later on in March. It's a rematch of last year's Section 7 AA title game that the Rails ended up winning by 20. They're both ranked in the top 10 in Class 2A. The Hilltoppers at 6 and the Rails at 7. Proctor head coach Matt Solberg says the game plan will be simple tonight. You got to take care of the ball. Um, they're going to try to press and push the, you know, the speed of the game. Can't get in a three-point shooting contest. We just got to run our game, take care of the ball. This year, we all just wanted to make it the best possible and just go as far as we could, hopefully make it to state, and just kind of show them, like, we're, we're Proctor Rails. Like, we're the Proctor Rails. Like, we got this. Like, be kind of, like, fear playing us. And we've always, and now it kind of is that way. But we kind of changed the whole dynamic when Proctor didn't used to be like that. So it's, it's a great feeling. The big game tips off at 7:15. The Rails come in at 15 and 1. The Hilltoppers 12 and 1. Marshall has that star guard combo of Gianna Napkins and Grace Kirk. The Rails with a deep team of seniors led by Sam Pagachnik. So two very contrasting styles. Obviously, we'll have highlights coming up at 10. And I also do want to mention Grace Kirk is 21 points away from her 2,000th career oh. point. 2,000 career points. points. Yeah. That is a lot. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. are fun. Watch so highlights coming up at 10. Be sure to tune okay. in. Okay, I'm excited for highlights of that CEC game as well. That That's too, and then we get the Twins Caravan right down the road. Man, I'm excited so, about that. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, we've got so much going on tonight. All right. Be sure to Stressed join us out. at 10, especially for <laughs> Kelly's sports. Yes. <laughs> well, by mid-January, most everyone has taken down their holiday decorations, most. but an Illinois zoo is putting some back up. Kind of. Check out these reindeer playing with some trees that were on display during uh, December. One tiger was especially excited about hers. Well, maybe that's because it was chock full of meat. <laughs> about 650 <laughs> trees were decorated, uh, decorated by various organizations for the Brookfield Zoo. And to get even more use out of the trees, most were later mulched and used by groundkeepers throughout the park. Wow, talk about sustainable. Recycle, reduce, reuse. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You got it. <laughs> All right, Dave, mild week on tap, huh? but maybe some snow coming up? Yeah, warm front coming in should make it warm enough to snow. You know okay. how that rolls yeah. around here. <laughs> and actually, it may be warm enough for a rain-snow mix to be with us. There's a chance for a couple dribbles here and there tonight, and maybe through the day tomorrow. The better chance arrives tomorrow evening. We shoot the odds up to 30%, which then increase to 60% on Thursday, 40% Friday, and dry but cloudy for the weekend. All right, that's the news for now. We'll see you back here at 10 o'clock tonight.